This reliable pasta dough recipe is what I'm going to be making. This is not a recipe that I came up with, but my tried and true, what I use when I make pasta at home, which is often. Um, I will scan this so that you can have this recipe as well. It's easier to show the process than just to write it, though I will include this as well. My good friend Jade made these note cards. They're beautiful, and I will include it with the video. Starting over. <laughs> Boom! Time for you to come on, just wait your hair. It's easier to show the actual making of the dough rather than writing it out, so that's why I wanted to make this video to explain how to put this together to make pasta noodles. This recipe is great for four to six servings. I'm only cooking for two tonight, so I'm cutting it directly in half. Um, if you were to make the full recipe, it would be perfect to make all the noodles and then you can freeze some. Uh, they last for a couple of days in the freezer, which is great for this time now since we're all staying in and at home. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with 180 grams of zero zero flour. It's about a cup and a half, so if you were to make the full recipe, it's three cups. And then one whole egg and three egg yolks. Um, it equals out to be 50 grams of whole egg and 45 grams of egg yolk. And you'll also need olive oil. I'm using just a really nice blend of olive oil and then some kosher salt as well. Let's get to mixing. So, other things that are important to have handy, a bench scraper or something similar to this. You can use, honestly, a spatula if you don't have this. I have a little bowl of water here, which might come in handy when kneading the dough. We will see my skills tonight. Bread wine is always good for just fun. All right? First step is, oh, and a fork. This is very important. First step is to dump your zero zero flour onto a clean work surface. Mound up your zero zero flour into a nice little pile mountain. Next you'll take your hand like a beak and drill into your zero zero flour mound to make a little crater. This is a well for your eggs. Once you have a nice crater in the middle of your zero zero flour, you'll add your egg yolks and whole egg. The recipe that I use has a measurement for kosher salt and olive oil, but I always just eyeball it. I'll do like two pinches for this and a nice little squirt of olive oil. The olive oil adds a bit of hydration as well as richness to this egg pasta dough. Um, this part can be kind of tricky if you are new to making pasta dough, but what you'll want to do is whisk around your eggs and yolk till they become one, just like that. And then slowly but surely you'll want to start scraping the sides and the tops of your zero zero flour into your egg mixture uh, very slowly. This is an important step just because you want to slowly add that flour. I've tried making pasta dough in a KitchenAid mixer and it does not turn out as nicely. This is a little bit more intentional and you can control the amount of flour that's going into the eggs at one time. The pasta grannies of Italy do it this way and I won't do it any other way. If you break your, uh, your flour well as you're doing this, it's not really that big of a deal. You could just start kneading. I 
I kind of just am mashing down the egg yolks into the flour so that it kind of starts to become a dough. Slowly but surely. And then once it looks something like this, I always just will scrape off the fork and start kneading, mixing the remaining zero zero flour into the egg mixture. At this point I'm just gathering flour and pushing it into the dough ball that I'm forming. I'm gonna try to look fancy for the camera. <laughs> All right. Now that I have a ball of dough forming, I'm gonna start doing the kneading technique that I'll use throughout the rest of this formation, which is a, you pull up and push down with your palm, and I kind of squeeze as I'm doing that too, and then you're gonna turn uh, just a quarter of the way, take that top, push down and knead like this, And the nice thing about pasta dough is that you cannot over knead it. You really want to make sure that you've kneaded it enough, but there, it would take like a very long time for you to get it to the point where it's over kneaded. Honestly, like five minutes or more is what I would recommend for this kneading process. This is how you get big wrists by kneading a lot of pasta dough. Strong wrists. Kind of gotten to this point where I can tell that this dough isn't going to incorporate any more of this flour, but I want it to be just a little bit softer, and I don't want this flour to be dusty on the outside. So I'm gonna take this little bit of water, and you really don't want to add too much. Um, but the great thing about this pasta dough is you as long as you can feel, as long as it feels like it's right, it probably is going to be. You don't want it to be too wet or too dry. You just kind of have to feel for that middle ground. It's going to get more moist as it sits and rests. So you kind of want it to be on this cusp where you're like, this might be too dry. You definitely don't want it to be like, this is too wet. So we continue to knead. This feels too wet to me. It has like a glossy uh, finish to it. So I'm gonna add some of this extra dough that we have here and continue to knead. I have a bit of water left over here. So if I feel like I need to add more, it's on my work surface and I can just uh, scooch my little ball of dough over into it and grab more water and we're just gonna keep kneading. I'm going to keep kneading until it gets silky and smooth. The thing about making pasta is it's all really by touch and you get to use all of your senses, which is one of the reasons why I like making pasta. It feels supple, is that a good word? But not too loose, like it's pretty, it takes like quite a bit of force to flatten, um, get it into a nice ball, and we're going to wrap this in plastic and let it sit for 30 minutes. The resting period is so that gluten can form. The zero zero flour is the finest milled flour there is, and it's also the, has the lowest gluten content, so it makes a really nice smooth dough, but it needs proteins to form that gluten um, and that's what the eggs do okay okay so for this half recipe I'm going to cut this uh, ball of dough in half I'm going to wrap the half that I'm not using up to keep it from drying out which is very important um, I'm going to show you how to roll out pasta dough with a machine if you don't have one of these. Um, I think it's still a good step.
step to watch just for information, but you can just roll this out with a rolling pin or a wine bottle if you don't have a rolling pin. Um, but yes, here I go. All right, rolling pin or wine bottle, have a rolling pin. You're gonna wanna get this flattened a bit so that it can go through the widest setting in your pasta machine, which is zero on mine. Um, and then you're just gonna roll this through once on zero. It's very nice. Once on one. Once on two. This is pushing out air bubbles, and you want to take it slowly through these levels, thicknesses, so that it doesn't overwork the pasta dough too quickly. I'm going to take it to a three, and then I'm going to stop for a second. Got a hair that's dangling on my arm. It's not good. Okay, this part. Um, I ha didn't do until recently. I did it in a different way, I'm like a much more difficult way, but I highly recommend doing it this way. We're going to laminate the dough in one step here. Um, so long sheet of dough folded into thirds, fold into half. This is laminating the dough so that it's, it's going to be stronger. We're going to get the air bubbles out. Now we have Again, one sheet, and we're going to start over at zero, and we're going to take it all the way to our desired thickness. Um, I'm going to be using this machine to make tagliatelle tonight. So traditionally, tagliatelle is made with pasta dough that is as that is so thin that you could read the newspaper through. That's kind of what they say. So I'm probably going to take it to a five or a six. I'm at a three right now. This is a looking really nice. So if you don't have a pasta machine, I would just recommend rolling it out to your desired thickness, maybe trying to laminate it in a similar way that I just did, and then rolling it back out. Um, or not, before I had a pasta machine, I just rolled the dough out to my desired thickness and then used a knife to cut noodles out of that sheet. Uh, works just as good as this. This is just a little bit more efficient. So the pasta, the sheet of pasta dough is getting thick. Not thick. The, the sheet of pasta is getting very long. And we are at a five. I'm going to take it one more to a six, but I'm going to cut this in half. Cut in half. And now we're going to go to a six, and I think that's as far as I'm going to take it. Got some dog hairs in the pasta for good measure. Got those dogs. Okay, that is a six. I'm going to lay this here. If you're rolling out the pasta dough, I would recommend lightly flouring your work surface so that you it doesn't stick, because the longer the pasta dough sits, the stickier it gets. Through six on this sheet. All right, two nice sheets of pasta dough that you could read through. Oh, beautiful. I've rolled my pasta dough out to a six, and I know it's ready because I can read through the pasta. Um, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want for tagliatelle. It's also kind of the thickness that I do for most noodles, unless I'm going for something thicker. So I've cut this pasta sheet in half to make the desired length of my noodle, which is personal preference. I just, it changes every time for me. I am going to roll this now through the other side of the pasta maker, which looks like this is the other half of a pasta maker. Uh, or this specific pasta maker. This is the cut for tagliatelle. 
Uh, I'm rethinking my original decision. I think I'm going to go with the smaller noodle for the pasta I'm making tonight, which is cacio e pepe, um, typically done with a round noodle. And we're going to make perfect flat noodles. Um, here, slow and steady and perfect. Hanging your pasta while you're cutting the rest of your noodles. This is important because, like I was saying earlier, the longer it sits out, it's gonna get sticky, so you want it to hang so that it kind of dries and doesn't stick to itself. If you don't have something like this, you could use a big pot, like a stock pot or just a larger pot, lay chopsticks or wooden spoons across the top of it and lay your pasta on it similar to this so that it dries more uniformly. How nice does this look? Ooh. All right, and then now the second one coming through. Gotta catch it on the other side so it doesn't fall all over the place. This is a good job for a second person if you have it. If not, not a big deal. We lay her down. Okay. Keep on repeating. Um, cut this pasta sheet in half again. I'm embarrassed by my knife. It's not very good. And back over to our noodle cutter, technical term, layer down. This looks great. My look right now says business up top, day seven quarantine on the bottom, right? Okay. So to finish up really quickly, we've got boiling hot water boiling water here. I've added kosher salt to it so that it's salty like the sea. It's just how it has to be. It's going to flavor the pasta and flavor your sauce as you use tongs to grab the noodles out of the boiling water and put it into your saute pan with your sauce. I would definitely recommend skipping a colander and rinsing pasta. It seems like um, just absolutely wrong. You want to bring that water, it has a lot of starch, it has a lot of flavor in it, you want to bring that water into your sauce. So that's why I have butter melting in this saute pan here for the beginning of my sauce. Um, that's a different video, we're just talking noodles right now. So my thin pasta, I'm just gonna leave it in for like maybe a minute. Um, thick thicker pasta, I'd say like four. It's gonna go a lot faster than dried noodles that you buy in the store. Um, if it's frozen, it might need a little bit more time, but we're going for that perfect al dente. Um, so I'm gonna say like, <laughs> I'm gonna say maybe a little bit more than a minute. It's also gonna finish cooking in the saute pan for our sauce. So it doesn't have to be perfect right away. You might, might wanna even let it cook a little bit less. My dog's drinking off in the corner. His water. Stay hydrated, people. These are uncertain times. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop off. Here's my all of my noodles that I've just made. Pop it off the stand. I'm gonna just. Am I really close to the camera? I'm just gonna slide her right in. It's gonna be quick, and that is where I'm going to leave you for today. Um, I hope that this was informational and that you learned a little bit from it. Um, yes, bon appetito.